What up, what up, what up, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27. Good as night, dude. Right about the hood. Oh, dear God. I'm already eating a drink. Look at the damn mess. Just a damn mess. Please no. And yes, please no. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, people? What's up, what's up? It's me, L Teddy 27 and I am back. I'm back for another review. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our much-anticipated review for Pose. This is season three. It is episode one, and we'll be up doing episode two as well. But episode one is entitled On the Run. All right, so we this is the final season. We've been anticipating. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and now it's here. Um, the last season, we know there was a whole, you know, <laughs> there were there was a whole to do at the premiere that they had last week with Janet Mock and all of that. Um, she did, um, Janet Mock did um, direct this first episode. Um, I watched the episodes and I, I really just wanted to take it in. I took some notes, but I don't, I'm not going to do it like my typical review. I just want to just talk about what I saw. And this is going to be more of a review than a recap. Normally, I do a review and recap. This is going to be more so for episode one and two, I should say. A review, not a whole lot of recapping every scene. I'm just going to take for granted that you've watched the episode if you're watching me. All right, so let's dive right in. So we start off, Electra done lost her job and all of that stuff. And, you know, it starts you off right in the middle of, you know, drama with that. We didn't get a whole lot of particulars with why Electra lost her job. I mean, well, we know why she lost her job. We know it was being raided, but they just uh, made the assumption that um, you were well versed on during that time in the mid 90s. They were shutting down a whole lot of um, these types of shops and businesses in that district. You know, it's just some history there that they were shedding light on and they did it really fast. But I think that could have been a whole there could have been a whole lot invested in that as well. I noticed that um, one of the overarching themes in episode one, and I guess it'll be throughout the whole season, is the OJ trial. And if I'm not mistaken, that was 94 or 95. Some I don't remember yet, but I know. So we're talking mid-90s right now. We see the fashions are mid-90s. Like I'm looking at Ricky, who... Um, has on the baggy pants, I mean, baggy shorts and everything like we wore back then and everything. So it really took me back. Um, some things <clears throat> that I noticed, um, Lamar has his own house now called House of Khan. Um, the ball scene is still the ball scene. I really thought it was going to be very different from the, um, with the ball scenes, but it still, look, it still gave the same you know, feel and aesthetic, the ball scene. Um, it, it, and then, like I said, I watched it and I didn't feel like they cheated me on those ball scenes or whatnot. Um, so I was glad about that. One of the things that they're focusing on is the fact that ballroom at that point wasn't about trophies. Now the girls need money and the girls are here for their coin and their money. And you did see that shift in the nineties where it wasn't just for bragging rights, a bitch need money, a bitch need coins. And that's what was going on. Um, and you're starting to see the changing of the guard, that old guard with Praetel and those older guys on the council. They are the dinosaurs now. They're the old girls. And there's this changing of the guard where there is there's still them trying to hold on to what, you know, they had or what ballroom was or who they used to be. But the new girls are like, we're not here for it. And you got to learn. to. Um, you got to grow. You got to grow and you got to move on. You got to know when your time is up. We saw part of that in um, episode two. And I'll get there when we get to episode two. But um, we saw that, you know, um, Con House of Khan came and slayed the ball. And the um, the council ain't had the money to pay these people. And so, and so um, they had this whole thing at the diner. That was real cute, you know. It was very dramatic. And these are, this is the spectrum. This is the LGBTQIA uh, co uh, Rainbow Coalition. And you expect it to be dramatic. So that scene where you got fucking Pray Tail standing on the top of the fucking table, screaming. Just, it was just so dramatic. He's literally screaming. You got fucking squirt and ketchup and mustard all over him in dramatic fashion. Like, it was almost damn dead slow motion. He's screaming, ah! I was like, y'all know what? <laughs> this shit is just way, way over dramatized. I was like, really? Really? Like, y'all just go tell these people, uh, diner and establishment, ain't nobody call the police. It was funny to me. I found that funny. That, that, that part made me laugh. 
Um, fast forward there, and it, episode one wanted to bring us back up to speed. Um, Blanca got her boyfriend. His name is Christopher, but she got her boyfriend. He's a doctor. He's nice, you know, chocolate, cute, this, that, and the third. Um, but at the beginning of the episode, her and the guy was watching when they were taking the gurney out when Nicole Brown Simpson's dead body on it. So, you know, the beginning of the season, we start with Nicole Brown Simpson. So I'm sure this is going to last through the whole, uh, um, season and probably at the season finale, that's probably when we're going to get the information about OJ being acquitted and so forth. I could see that being in a series finale. Um, anyway, um, Poppy is doing his damn thug dizzle in um the business i mean in the fashion industry and you know he's become you know i'm not gonna say a power player but he's not where he was at the end of episode two i mean season two where he was just getting you know into the industry now is fast forward a couple of years and you know he got an office you know they got a nice house he got nice clothes he's doing the damn thing and whereas he was leaning on um angel back in season two now angel really has to lean on him because he's the one with all of the moves and, you know, and she's not getting as much. Um, that's another thing. She's not getting as much work as she used to. Um, more funerals, more people dying. AIDS is still taking people out. You know, just more of the same. Blanca works now as a um, hospital aide and she talks to and works with people down to the AIDS uh, ward. And, you know, she helps, um, you know, around the hospital and she works there. And that's how she met, met her boyfriend or whatever. Nur What's the nurse name? I can't remember the nurse. I think it's Nurse Jenny. I can't remember the nurse name. Y'all know who I'm talking about. The white lady nurse that helped him out last season. I think I'm going to call her Nurse Jenny for now until I remember her name. Anyway, um, she's um, probably one of the ones responsible, I believe, for helping get Blanca that job and so forth. Now, we find out that Cubby, if you remember Cubby, Cubby and Lamar go all the way back to season one. They were the ones who um, were the two, like, twink little boys in the um, in the house, um, house of Abundance. That was, yeah. That was um, Electra's first house, House of Abundance. And so that it was Lamar and it was Cubby. And so Cubby done, Cubby's dying. Cubby got full-blown AIDS. He's, you know, terminal at this point, And he looks bad. He looks real bad. And it's affecting Blanca. And um, um, there was a really nice scene where Blanca tells Cubby, listen, your mom is here. Cubby's like, I want to see my mom. She didn't see it for me. I want to see it. But Blanca was like, no, your mom wants to make it right with you before you pass. So the mom came in. They had this touching moment. You can tell it is really wearing down. I mean, it's one thing when you work in those kind of jobs and you have to work with people you don't know. And you still, you know, reach out. You still do what you have to do. You still make it a point to um, be there for them. But it's a whole different story when it's somebody who you were close to, attached with, have, you know, bonds with and so forth. Like, that, that's got to be hard. Um, and I saw, and so Blanca ends up having this watch party when they had the slow speed chasing the white Bronco. They end up, everybody ends up coming over Blanca's house and they watch it and so forth. And even, um, nurse Jenny comes over, the whole family comes over. We see Damon. Now Damon looked like he up, but maybe it's just in the face, but he looked like he done put on a few pounds. Cause remember he was supposed to be out there in, um, Europe touring and this, that, and the third. And, um, it was a scene with Lamar. And Electra and um, Blanca, where Lamar alluded to Damon being an alcoholic and that Damon was like doing hand jobs for alcohol or whatever. So Damon had a problem. Anyway, Pray Tell is a whole ass alcoholic, too. That's one of the um, things, too. Pray Tell then became a whole ass alcoholic. He's coping with death after death after death after death. And I think as well as coping with. There's a certain amount of I, I can't my brain just went blank. I can't. There's an actual term for it where. You feel like you feel guilty because everybody who I, I, let me just put it out there. Um, um, Pray Tell has AIDS and all of his friends that have AIDS as well has been dying and dying and dying. And yet here he is still alive. So there's a certain amount of guilt that he may feel that goes along with that. Like, why am I here? And all of my friends and all of these people I love, I have to keep watching them die over and over and over and over. He keeps talking about he done seen a thousand deaths. And so you can imagine there's a certain amount of guilt that he feels. I can't, there's a term for it. I can't think of it. My, my, my brain is blank. But anyway, um, I think that's a part of him learning to deal with that. And the drinking helps him cope with that, along with watching all of these deaths, along with watching just the whole scene change. The scene that Pratel was a part of in his youth and during his prime has completely changed. The gay scene, the ballroom scene, all of it is changing. And so dealing and grappling with all of that at the same time is alcohol is how he's coping. And there's allusions to him perhaps taking more prescription drugs as well. Um, so at one point at the party, Ricky and um, 
And Ricky and um, Pray Tell are still a couple. They're still together. But Ricky can't seem to get Pray Tell to stop drinking. And Pray Tell has been really nasty to Ricky. Like his his temperament is real short. He's 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 nasty. The alcohol does things to him. And so I because I was wondering if Ricky would still be with Pray Tell, but he is at this point. So um, at one point, Damon takes Pray Tell to his room and they start to talk. He got all this booty stuff. He done been through Alcoholics Alcoholics Anonymous, and um, he um. It gives tries to give Pray Tell this book on AA. Um <clears throat> and Pray Tell doesn't want no parts of it. So it looks at first like Damien has gotten through his alcoholism. Um we then see Blanc and the boyfriend. Blanc and the boyfriend are cute. Boyfriend is cute. Boyfriend knows she's a transsexual. Boyfriend is serious about her and wants her to be his um um meet their pa meet his parents and so forth. Um and she's fearful. Because she's like, mm -mm, I don't know about, you know, um, whether or not they're going to accept me as a trans woman. This, that, and the third, um, the fact that you come from, because his parents are like the Huxables, where mom got a real good job. I forgot they told us what the mom and dad did. I don't remember. But he comes from a good household. He's a doctor and so forth. Um, Lulu and, uh, I'm just getting y'all updated. Lulu and, um, and um, Angel are doing um, weed laced in coke. Which then leads to them just being full back crackheads again. So, and and that's um, Angel's way of coping with the fact that she's not getting work like she used to, and she's feeling some kind of way about that. Um, back down to the hospital. Well, while, while um, Blanca was getting ready to go to the dinner with um, her boyfriend Christopher to go meet his parents, she got the call: Cubby is dying, and Cubby's on his last legs. He's not conscious. He's getting ready to die. The mom is there. The whole family comes. Cubby dies. They grieve. Um, they go outside and they were like, "Well, Cubby would want us to um, do this because when they went, when they had that um, watch party, Blanca was like, why don't we, you know, walk as a house one more time and do Friday night dinner like we used to back in the day?' Because they haven't walked as a house in years. And um, she was like, you know, maybe just one last time we walk as a house and so forth. And they were like, okay, we'll do it. And so they had agreed to do that. But in the interim, Cubby dies. And so when Cubby died, Block was like, I don't want to do that no more. And and um, when I think Pray Tell said, they, he didn't feel comfortable um, with them walking as a house anymore. And and Blanca was like, no, that's we're ball. And that's what he would like us to do. You know, the whole cheesy little storyline. Oh, he would want us to walk in the ball after his death to commemorate him. And this, that, and that. He was like, oh, okay. Some of the writing to me, I was like, mm, mm, okay. I got re really, I'll say this really quickly. The, oh, I'm so happy it's back, was, you know, I sobered up from that. And I just really started to look at it from a critical eye. And some of the writing I was good with. Some of it I was just like, like this part about, oh, Kobe would have wanted us to walk the ball for him. Because I was like, it just came off real cheesy, real predictable. And so um, Lamar comes late. After Cubby has already passed, and they give Lamar the business. Lamar gives them a business. They're like, "Yeah, we challenging you. We come in tonight at the ball. We gonna see you at the ball." You know that whole weak, tired story. Like, "Oh, we gonna see you at the ball. We gonna see you at the ball." Shock. Anyway, but Lamar then goes in that room with Cubby's dead body, and he grieves for his brother, for his friend. And I'm glad they gave us that moment because you know Lamar and Cubby were real close, and they gave him some. For not being there. And you could see it bothered him that he was not there when Lamar passed. And so he went in there and had his own moment to grieve. Blanca finally goes out to dinner with um, Christopher's parents. And Christopher's parents, um, Christopher's mom lays into her. Christopher's mom didn't clock her at first. Not in this city. But um, Christopher's mom was reading her about being from the ghetto or being from poverty and not being, you know, well-to-do like them. And the fact, you know, what do you do for a living and how, you know, all of that. And when is my son getting a child and this, that, and the third. And so um, there was that. And it was real. Um, it was it, it was very uncomfortable for Blanca because you could see the mom was not here for Blanca at all. She felt like Blanca was real beneath her. Um, and she felt like her son could probably do better than Blanca. Um, then we see Blanca goes off to the community college because when she was down there to the um, um, hospital talking to Nurse Jenny, Nurse Jenny, she would say, you know, I could have, you know, if I had applied myself, I could have been a nurse. And Nurse Jenny was like, listen, it's not too late. You can still go, go to nursing school and become a nurse. And so we see at the end of the episode, Blanca goes to the community college to get a um, application to apply for nursing school. Kudos to her. Now we're the end of episode one. And now we're on to episode two of season three of Pose. It is entitled 
intervention. And um, so at the beginning of the episode, we see um, Blanca and Nurse Jenny, they're talking about Pray Tell. And the fact that Pray Tell is just spiraling out of control. Even at the ball, we saw Pray Tell was drinking at the ball too much. And at work, at, um, I think we were working at Macy's at, you know, um, at the perfume at Cologne County. He over there sneaking drinks at work. Like, he's really got an alcohol problem. And so Blanca is talking to Nurse Jenny, and they're discussing um, Pray Tell's alcohol problem. And Nurse Jenny says, yeah, I, I, he hasn't talked to me in a while. And, you know, he's been coping with all of these deaths and everything, this, that, and the third. And so then they say, yeah, we need an intervention for Pray Tell. So, they, um, so um, Blanca has this family meeting, and they end up, you know, practicing for this intervention. That we met, I think her name is Linda. There was this um, lesbian. I think her name was Linda, um, who's... Um, one of the counselors down to the hospital and um, or a social worker that works with people um, at down to the hospital to get to cope with certain things that they're going through. So they came up with this idea of having this intervention and having pray tell go to rehab, but it cost $2,500. I thought they said it was $2,500 a week. I don't know if it was $2,500 total or $2,500 a week, but I know there was $2,500 and they were like, we ain't got $2,500. So, Oh, I forgot to mention this in my, um, in my um, episode one, uh, review they did walk the ball um they won um that ball and um electra is the only thing i took away from that ball because electra was sickening that woman was sickening that woman came out like a freaking goddess okay um but yeah they they won they donated their proceeds i forgot to mention that but electra was sickening honey uh, y'all know I, we live for electra around here anyway um they have a family meeting. Um, I talked about the family meeting. They prepare for this uh, intervention. So, um, Electra says, listen, now that they're offering money for these balls, you can win $500 for a category. We got at least five of us that can walk. If we win each one of our categories, that's $500, and we can have the $2,500 we need to put Pray Tell into this rehab. Um, at that meeting, Blanca announced that Damon relapsed and that he had left her house and moved to Charleston. And that he probably wasn't coming back. And she was uh, very, very distraught about the fact that she felt like she'd lost her child. Um, and Electra, I love Electra's role. Mean as Electra is, because I see myself a lot in Electra. Like, a lot of Electra's personality and ways of doing things is me. I may have good intentions, but the way I come at it, people have a problem with because I'm harsh. I'm hard. I'm abrasive. But it's always from a good place. And there's always, if you chip away at all of the rough edges there's always great stuff in the things that i have to tell my friends they always say it's just the way it comes off we don't want to take it and so that's the same way with electra electra is there to comfort blanca tell her you're not a failed mother you are not and you are great and you did great by him and you gave him a good foundation and he'll be fine so i love electra in um this season that's probably the, that's thunderstorm outside we got whole tornadoes and thunderstorms here in the greater atlanta area um what, what was, where was I? Oh, so I love Electra. Um, it comes to find out. Um, Poppy finds out and knows that um, that um, Angel is doing drugs. She's the old ass crackhead. And he, you know, pours his out to her. Hey, bitch, I done gave up everything, gave up everybody. I look like I do. And I can have anybody I want. And I want you. And I ain't looked at nobody else because she tried to use him and cheat. you like, uh -uh, I ain't cheated on nobody. I've been over here working for you and for us. And you out here becoming the old ass crackhead. You need to get your life in order. I was here for it. Um, and, you know, most times when you're a crackhead, everybody sees and knows you're a crackhead, but you over here thinking you're hiding from somebody. We see you old ass crackhead. You're a fucking baser. Fucking basehead. Anyway, one of the other things that I love so far is it's mid-90s, and we get all of this great mid-90s music. 90s has some of the best music, and I'm biased because I grew up in the mid-90s, and I spent my teenage years in the mid 90s. I mean, in the 90s. And so, oh my God, music was life. Music was everything. And we, and as much as I love 80s music, and I love, I stand 80s music. But to me, it's 90s and then 80s for me. Just me. But um, we got, and so we see Lulu um, because now, you know, Mother Electra has went full speed into mother mode and she's preparing the girls for this ball so they can get this money for a break. So you see this moment where Lulu is supposed to be Tony Braxton. She got on the Tony. She really looked like Tony Braxton, just a little more heavier than Tony Braxton. But she really looked like Tony Braxton with that Tony Braxton wig. I'm like, get it, Lulu. Electra say, girl, she's lip syncing. You mean the world to me. Electra put her, this, girl, you ain't doing nobody's. You're, you know, you won't be in this show, girl, because you're a whole ass baser. 
and mother knows best, girl, you need to get your life in order. When you get your life in order, perhaps I will let you walk, but you won't be walking this one, honey. Um, and so she had to put her foot down. You see Electra also practicing Ricky and getting him ready to do his uh, bogan, you know, no, that's not good enough. No, that. So she's preparing the girls, getting the girls ready. Um, Blanca is uh, supposed to have another uh, dinner with um, Pray Tell, not Pray Tell, Jesus, her boyfriend Christopher's dad and mom. And she had met, she had got with Angel and um, Electra and told them what happened at the first. And they were like, uh uh, girl, he should have defended you. Girl, he was supposed to have your back. What the fuck is going on with him? You need to check him because he was supposed to check his mama for you. And so she doesn't want to go to another dinner. So, but the boyfriend talks her into it. The boyfriend said, listen, I got my mama. Let me handle her. Don't worry. You won't have to experience that no more. So they go to dinner. Um, and uh, before they went to dinner, Electra was talking to, uh, not Electra, Blanca was talking to uh, Angel and let Angel know, oh, I know Lulu on them drugs. Boo, I know you on them drugs too. Anyway, at the dinner, mom, the dad didn't come. Mom got out of pocket again, way out of pocket. And Christopher checked her. Christopher said, I don't know, this is who I'm with because uh, uh, Blanca told her, yes, I'm a trans woman. And, and, Chris, Christopher had to check her. And Chris, um, shoot, my stupid phone. And Chris, um, Christopher told her, if you want me in your life, you're going to have to accept Blanca because Blanca is my life at this point. So I love that Christopher checked her. And that, you know, I, that helped Blanca because Blanca already got a lot going on with Praytel and with um, Damon and, and all her kids. She'll need to um, deal with this. What I hate is I wanted to see, remember at the end of season two, you got the two, the little boy and the little girl. And I was like, okay, is Blanca going to take them in? And I, and I was hoping that, you know, maybe this season we would have saw them maybe a couple years older. We ain't got none of that. We ain't got, I, we don't see them at all. Because Blanca talked about all my kids are out of the house and I'm, you know, she have empty nest syndrome. And I hate that we didn't get, I really wanted to see that evolution of, you know, the next set of kids for Blanca. Because I felt like she needed that, but. Who knows? Um, Blanca, um, um, pray tell goes to the members of the council and, um, they tell him that one of the members of the council named Castle has been missing. He ain't been on the scene at all. Pray tell goes over to the man's house. The man is basically in bad condition. He's sick. He could barely walk. He got a whole pharmacy in the house. He got a lot going on. Um, so we get to the, and so Pray Tell is like, listen, don't, because he got these sleeping pills and stuff. Pray Tell was like, don't kill yourself. He's like, if I was going to kill myself, I'll go to the Plaza Hotel and get me a suite and do it there in grand fashion. So we get to the ball. Pray Tell gets dude to go to the ball, right? Because um, he ain't been to the ball. He's a member of the council, but he ain't been to the ball to nothing in a while since he's been sick. Pray Tell gets him to go. They had a ball. The ball happens. Now, let me say this. Um, Everybody wins. Um, 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 Electra wins her category. Ricky wins his category. But I don't know what the fuck that was. Pray tell was doing that shit was a fucking mess. And I was with Lamar now. I was like, how the fuck y'all gonna give him all of these tens? And he was a fucking mess. I was like, yeah, you could tell that it was rigged at that point. You could tell that there was somebody had to talk to somebody because whatever the fuck that was, Pray tell was doing on that fucking floor was a goddamn mess. That was a fucking mess. I don't care if he was. Um, Dancing to invoke this shit was a goddamn mess. He looked a mess. His outfit was a mess. That those dance moves was a fucking mess. It was tired, and Lamar went out there and was sickening to that Janet Jackson ear. It was a mess. Um, but after they, uh, so they won all the categories. So they got the money. Um, House of Evangelista. Anyway, um, the guy Castle is at the bar. Pretty had told him before he left to do his category. Don't drink. Don't drink. You got all the drugs. He drank anyway. And ended up having a seizure. They had to take him to the hospital. This, that, and the third. Um, and after Pray Tell comes back in, Lamar gives Pray Tell a little bit and says, that's how you're going to die too, bitch. Basically, it's only bitch. You're going to die just like him. And so, yeah. Pray Tell is all in his feelings, all in his mind, all out of sorts because he's still watching Frank go to the hospital. It's just a lot going on for Pray Tell. Then we have the intervention. Now, let me say this. Y'all just got to go watch the intervention. But they tried to have this intervention with Pray Tell and pray tell laid them the fuck out. Do you hear me? When I tell you he read those people at that goddamn table, 
He read each and every one of them like no other. The phonemic awareness and prosody with which this young man read them is the thing of legends. He eviscerated them. I mean, from Ricky to Blanca to Lulu to Poppy to Angel to Electra, he gave them the business. That's the kind of, that's my type of read. Now, that right there is my type of read. That ain't no roasting the gag. That is dragging, skull dragging. You, you hear me? Somebody going on out there to the back, to the dumpster, and recover all of those scalps. Because there's a lot of scalps out there back in the, in the dumpster. You hear me? Gave them everything they wanted. Won't be no intervention here today. That That's what it won't be. <laughs> Just a mess. Um, pray, um, pray tell goes home. Ricky is leaving. Ricky's like, mm -mm, I'm not here for this. I do. I have to live through watching my mama deal with the alcohol and somebody abuse her and stuff like that. And even though Pray Tell is not physically abusive to her, to him, Pray Tell is verbally abusive. And Pray Tell's anger and temper is out of order. And so they have this moment where he's leaving and Pray Tell breaks down and has this breakdown and meltdown and starts crying and like, don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave me. And it was one of those moments where you thought he was going to be like, okay, I'm going to stay. I'm going to help you through this. Baby Ricky was like, no, I have to. And I'm glad they did that. I'm glad Ricky was like, no, I got to leave. And Ricky left. And Pray Tell did all of the things to try to make him say, you don't got nowhere to go. Nobody wants you. You got AIDS, this, that, and the mm -mm, I'm leaving. All that might be true. I'm getting the hell out of here. And I'm glad. Like, Pray Tell had a whole moment. Uh, and I'm not telling you moment from Dream Girl. Girl, all you need to just do is say, and you, and you, and you, you're going to love me. That's all you need to do. But he was having his whole um, F.E. moment, Patty. Um... Then we have this moment where Angel talks to Poppy and she says, babe, I got a drug problem. I went and signed up with the counselor lady, Linda, down to the hospital. And we have this outpatient program that she's going to have me a part of because I need help. And I'm glad that that's happening. Although, if I'm a bet man, there's going to be more relapses for Angel down the way. But she wants to help herself. Um, Blanca goes over to... Um, well, I talked about how Blanca... Um, Went to dinner with the um with the mom again, and um Christopher had to check his mom or whatnot, um and so that all happened. He had to check his mom, and I was glad to see it. The Blanca needed that. Um, pray tell, um, um, goes to see the council. Nobody can find his friend Castle, and pray tell is still the worst. His Castle, because they knew Castle had got out of the hospital, but he thought Castle was trying to commit suicide, which he was. So pray tell. You know, because they said Castle wasn't home. So Pray Tell goes down to the Plaza Hotel. He has management go up in there, um, get him in the room. And yep, sure enough, he laid out on the bed. He's not dead. And so Castle has this moment where he's like, listen, I was going to do it, but I couldn't. And he was like, Pray Tell was like, yeah, you want to live. And he was like, well, Pray Tell says, promise you'll throw, throw those uh, pills away. And Castle tells him, if you throw away your alcohol. And so they have this agreement between the two of them. I'll do everything I can to stay alive by not doing these drugs, taking these prescription drugs and killing myself, as long as you do everything you can to stay alive by getting help for your alcohol. And so the next thing we know, we see Blanca taking Pray Tell to the um to the um rehab center up in north up north upstate New York. And what is playing in the motherfucking background? One of my top five favorite songs from Queen Mariah. Anytime you need a friend. Gave me life abundant. Baby, I don't even think I was focusing on what was going on. I mean, I was, it was watching me. I wasn't watching it. It was watching me because I was over there jamming and rocking out to my Anytime You Need a Friend by Mariah, singing every riff, every run, every word, every ad lib. Because when you're a Mariah Carey stan, like I am, you know every riff, run, word, ad lib that Queen Mariah has on any song. I'm for real. <laughs> so, pray tell us what we have. Goes off from there. Um hoping there were moments that i was okay with i was good good with the writing the writing was good for me there were moments that was just real cheesy and gratuitous and just predictable with the writing and i you, when you set the bar high you start to have high expectations and i have high expectations of this show and the writers and it was still great still a good um first two episodes i do think it would have been better for them to do one episode and not the double episode because it did go on a bit long um, I like the fact that they are pinning this to the O.J. Simpson trial to let us know the time period we're dealing with. Um, and so they're going to let us know everything that was happening. You see this transition in the ball world. But I do want um, I, I do want it to be a little bit more. 
you know i wasn't overwhelmed it did not they didn't knock it out of the box with this premiere it was it wasn't bad it was okay if i was grading it i might give it up the teacher in me i give it a b minus i give it a b minus or c plus depending on how i felt on that day today because i feel i'm in a good mood i'll give it a b minus talk to me tomorrow i might give it a c plus so that was posed let me know what y'all think let's get in the comment section y'all know what we like to do we like to argue, argue about what we saw until that next time that's all i got for y'all thank y'all for coming y'all drive safely i'm out